Day late, a dollar short, and a host down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's just me and Jordan today. We don't know where James is. He's MIA. <laughs> he was all gung ho yesterday, and now he's he's missing. <laughs> um, uh, you wanted to start with like the various Ubuntu announcements, or you? Because like we can't really. James was who was doing Libre, so. Uh, sure, we can start with Ubuntu stuff. Or you want to start with Q and A? I don't really care which. <laughs> uh, the, well, the Ubuntu stuff I've actually I've talked about on my channel, but we can. Um, th there's only a couple of things that are big things that I've heard this week. Uh, the the biggest things, uh, if you didn't know, it's Ubuntu Developer Summit this week. It happens once every release cycle, and the developers all get together in one place, and usually something big is announced. The biggest announcements this time are in Ubuntu 11.04, they're moving from the default GNOME interface to the Unity interface on the desktop. And the blueprints to go along with that, there aren't any actual drawings or anything, but they, they read that they're going to be having the, the bar on the from your perspective on this side. Uh, it's going to be mo movable. You can put it on the bottom, the side, I think even the top. Uh, and the big giant applications window that takes up the whole screen on a netbook will be a clickable button up in that corner, just like it is now, but it'll only take up a small portion of the screen, kind of like a, a slab that you'd find in Linux Mint, but with the, uh, the Unity stuff behind it. In addition, they're going to be moving from a Mutter backend to Compiz, which is more common and a little bit easier to configure and... Uh, works better with existing software. Yeah, I would say I, I love Compiz. It's the, yep. the, the, the only flaw in Compiz <coughs> is that it is a little resource intensive. So if you're trying to run it on a complete POS... Uh, have it, you run Mutter? <laughs> I'm not saying Compiz. Mutter doesn't have the same problem. <laughs> Just uh, well, and Mutter's a much younger project, I think. Yeah. It, 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 honestly, it took... It's okay. Compiz in its current incarnation is only about two and a half years old, but it's like first there was Compiz, and then Compiz forked into Compiz and Daryl, and then there was this fusion called Compiz Fusion, and then it reforked, and then it. <laughs> so it's like well, but Compiz Fusion is actually it's two separate projects. There's Compiz Core and Compiz Fusion. <laughs> yeah, it's I was like, reading about this because somebody asked the other day. Yeah, I like the. the Realistically, it took Compiz about a decade to get to where it is now, because it's it's been around for a while. It, going back to its original, two separate projects came together, went apart, son, and now two projects running in parallel routes. <laughs> it's, it's I, I kind of consider that all one string development. I realize there's people who are fans of Compiz, especially the latest version of Compiz who will diametrically disagree with what I just said and said, no, this is not Barrel. This is a Barrel's dead. Because <laughs> I think there actually is still a fork of Barrel that's continuing on its own, just nobody really uses it. Um, I, I haven't, I don't know if it's still carrying on. It, there was, when Fusion took place, there was like this diehard group that wanted to keep Barrel going. And I don't know if that's dried up or not. And this was a few years back, and I was a fan of where the other fork was going, so I didn't really follow it. So, <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure about that. Well, it, but I mean, they've gotten it to the point now where even the 512 integrated graphics card on an Intel chip can run it. So it, it's, I think it's it's accessible enough with modern hardware, even on a netbook, that it fits the build well enough. Uh, what's your general experience on that, though? Uh, comp is definitely. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, there, there are so many systems. I've, I've, uh, I had a netbook for a while, and that netbook would run comp is very, very well. Not as well as a desktop, obviously, but a whole yeah. lot better than it ran the mother based interface. Yeah, it's, it's like, and depending on how lightweight the system is, you might be better off to use the native window environment. I, I don't know. It, it depends. Uh, it's because it, it's. I always use Compiz just because of the added navigations it, it adds, but I guess the other one could be useful. Uh, anyways, what was the other development? <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, sorry. The, the uh, software center 
currently there is one app available for purchase. There was supposed to be another one, but some people don't see it. Uh, in 11.04, they're going to be opening that up a lot wider. As far as I understand it, it's only going to be available for open source software. But instead of being a, you will pay $20 for this app, you will pay $5 for this, it's a pay what you want, uh, take a penny, leave a penny kind of thing. Okay, I like that idea, and Ubuntu is one of the few distros that is doing that. Uh, however, um, I'm thinking about average end user, and at the end of the day, I one of the primary ideas of open is you don't discriminate against non-open. Uh, it's like it's like you're open. It's like right. you, you, if 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 non-open wants to come to you, it's like you make it clear it's non-open and it's beyond open's control. But they and, and I'm I'm definitely for the idea of having proprietary software in there. Yeah, you know, I've gotten a lot of comments from people saying, "Well, that's just horrible. Don't do that." But I mean, if you think about it, how many wonderful applications are are basically just turning away because they don't know a good way to distribute their software on Linux? How many apps are we missing out on because we don't have a good way to, to get a paid for product? Yeah, it's like, okay, I, it's I, why, why I would prefer it be open source so you know what it's doing, uh, especially with some of these applications. Um, it, it, I realize there are certain companies that are never going to come on board with that, and what I would prefer is not because honestly, over here, like the software center is the exact opposite problem of what I'm afraid the Mac software center is going to turn into. I'm afraid the Mac software center is going to turn into this anti-open source, anti-competitive, anti yada yada thing. And I'm also afraid the Microsoft one that we don't even really know particulars about yet is going to turn into that at some future point. Over here on Linux side, we have the exact opposite problem. We're anti anything that isn't in jive with our philosophy, which is a whole nother problem. Because, it, it, and it really is the same problem, just the other side of the coin. And I don't, I don't know on that, because it's, I just don't want to be seeing that kind of abuse going on one way or the other. I mean, it would be really nice if it could just be open to whoever wants to put their software out there, as long yeah. as they don't uh, go ridiculously overboard with it. Like, if Adobe showed up with any of their products and demanded $1,000 per license... There are people that would pay it, but well, Adobe already charges a thousand more than you, you haven't priced the Creative Suite in a while, have you? Yeah, for work. And, okay, uh, okay. And how much is dollar. it right now? It's like it's, it, it is ouch dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's like. Well, no, it's like it, honestly the way I think these marketplaces should work across platform, not just on Linux, uh, Lin uh, OS ten Linux on everywhere, is it should be these are these are the clear and defined criteria of the marketplace. These are the accessible hooks. This is how things work. This is what you need to work with and be compatible to. And make one of the terms and conditions of being in the marketplace is if your application crashes the OS or crashes critical parts of the OS, your application will be removed from the marketplace or put in like, warning, may break your system until such time as you fix that problem. Um, and just have clear and defined criteria that are, this is what we're looking for. And as long as you meet those criteria, you're in. Not, well, our magic eight ball of the day said these are the criteria. Not, your business model must be in tune with our philosophy. Not, so, it's like, both are the same problem. It's like, this is the criteria. This is what's needed to work with the system. You adopt the business model you think makes sense. We advise open source because that's what we know our users are looking for, but if you think they're going to look the other way for you, feel free. <laughs> it should be the criteria. You, if, if you're trying to strong arm this one way or the other, it, you're trying to strong arm it. Even if you're doing it for altruistic purposes, you're still strong arming it. it sounds like you don't have anything else to say on that. <laughs> uh, but there's just the, the problem is that there are uh, each different platform has their own uh, supervisory type board, advisory board, whatever, the approval board, I guess, that makes the decisions. And I mean, why? Uh, it makes perfect sense to have a group of people that make that call, but the, I don't know, I guess 
the criteria, like you were saying, just needs to, to be set more standardized. Well, no, and, and, and here's the thing. If you set the, the criteria record. ahead of time, and then company XYZ that the advisory board just hates comes through with something that meets all the criteria, they can't go, well, our magic eight ball criteria just because we don't like you, therefore you're disqualified. It's like, it, it, if the criteria is clear and sound, it helps prevent the I don't like you, therefore you're not going to run over here thing. And, and people are human. People, there are certain companies I would do that with. My, I, it's like, it's when, at some point I want to start doing hardware reviews. Before we start doing hardware reviews, software reviews, any of that stuff, I want those of us who are going to be messing with that to create a clearly defined set of criteria of what we're looking for. In the unlikely event that something like a Mac, which I diametrically hate, scores a 10 out of 10, I want it to get a 10 out of 10 and not my personal bias get us that, which means you have to define all the criteria ahead of time. It, well, and a standard for measuring that criteria. Yeah, and, and disclose that standard of measure, I mean, so that developers know, okay, this is the hurdle we have to jump through to make it work. Not, so they know whether or not it's worth their time and resources to do it or not, uh, and everything else, rather than I foresee this will develop this way. It's, it just doesn't work. Um, and that's... I realize I'm sounding like an anti-Linux troll now, but that is one of the problems with commercial people developing for Linux right now, to be quite honest. In that there isn't a clear-cut set of criteria, because like you say, every distro kind of does go in its own direction. It's not quite the Wild West that's made out to be, but on the other hand, unless you've messed around with Linux enough to realize it isn't that Wild West, it seems like it's that Wild West at first glance. Yeah. I think it's more ignorance rather than having actually looked at does it make sense to develop for this platform. I think they just assume... And, and that idea actually does apply to... Uh, I don't know if you talked about this on your uh, iWorld or PC versus Mac or whatever, where Steve Jobs was having a, a conniption fit about Android talking about how there's so many different platforms and nobody wants to develop for that and you know Twitter deck they they had such a hard time with it uh, we, we've talked about it a couple of times what I find funny about that is I think that's actually that marketplace is actually growing faster than OS uh, iOS is right now because they've kind of come up with agreed upon standards it took a while there was some trial and error to that and it's like it's one of the things Linux needs to do. It's like, and, and honestly, I think on a per distro basis, it isn't necessarily a bad idea. I mean, every distro already has built into it a package manager, so you just add a well, almost every oh, oh, most dis most yeah. distros aimed at the end user. Right. I, I don't know any distro that's that's really aimed at the end user that doesn't have a package manager. Or can't get one, at least. Or can't get one. So the, the distros that fall in that category, which is really the ones we're talking about as far as exactly. for this topic, it, it's not that hard for the distro to add hooks into the package manager and say, these are the things that are in tune with what we're trying to do with this OS. Because it really is a different OS. It, it's Linux, but it's a different OS. And go, these are our criteria. It, it's like, and, and, and honestly... Uh, as long as the criteria are clear and concise, it would be possible for a company like Adobe to use the same binary for Ubuntu, PCLin, uh, Mint, even if it continues to fork into a more pure Debian-based distro, and, and so on and so forth, and they would it'd just be the additional on top is made for different criteria, and that's not really any more work than what they already do to... You know, they do a little bit for Windows, they do a little bit for OS X. That's not an oh dear god amount of work. Because it's, it's, it's still the, the same binary they're using on all of them. It's just, do you want this version or this version? And once, and, and really, uh, because all of that stuff is built in, they just have to, it, it'd be as simple as submitting it to that distro for review and approval, and then it points to their server, and it, it, it's, it integrates just as well. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like the infrastructure's there. It, it's, it's the making peace ground that's needed. Mm -hmm.